All right. I'm just going to quick go over the paints right here, real quick here. So uh, Opaque Alley, your white, Brilliant Yellow Pale, Diet Camium Yellow Deep, Terra Rosa there. This, pretty much the usuals, Indigo, Black Spinel, Van Dyke Brown. We have a little guest appearance by Thalo Green and by Cobalt Blue, which is occupying real dangerous real estate between Egyptian Violet and the Prussian Blue over here. Indian Violets, or sorry, Indian Yellows down here, Egyptian Violet over there. And then we've got our homemade fluorescent oil paints right here. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Hey, Rex, how you doing? So yeah, our imprintable, well, no one told me at the start, maybe save your things as projects instead of just slice and save, because that's pretty much what I do is just slice and save, right? That's what I thought you do, not realizing that there was all these different formats. So yeah, uh, what would you say about a year's worth of build plates are all dead, especially the two weeks that I spent every single day making more build plates. So yeah, those are all toast. They're all gone. And we'll have to uh, start all over again from scratch. So that's going to take a little while. Uh, the happy, oh, Happy Heretic just posted a link to their uh, thing. So everybody could please go check that out. That would be great. Now let's get going with some pre-glaze here, which as we said, is not going to be as liquid. Do I have anything out here we don't want to spatter? Not really, no. Okay. Because, I mean, yeah, resin is maybe a little more absorbent than plastic. But this is not printing resin. Speaking of printing, hey, Cinder, nice to see you. And Grim, how the heck are you doing? Uh, and again, we just, uh, this is what we were working on here. This is Army Painting Series 27. These are the Sangors. And this is the those green stuff world. Uh, the pieces, the casting pieces. And of course, these are all the broken ones that we used, of which there are many. Uh, let's see. So Rex, uh, yeah, Rex, I just did an order with Dick Blick for brushes and illustration boards. I really don't need any paints, but we needed, br well, we needed brushes, stat, and then we also needed those illustration boards. So Cinder, I hope that things have been going okay the last few weeks. Uh, I think you've probably been super busy, which is okay because it's been super busy here. So our imprintable, it's really a bummer because among all the things that got trashed and, and wiped out, and of course I just had it here. Where the heck did it go? Here it is. I had resized a whole bunch of these guys down to Lord of the Rings size. Now I think I did print out one build plate just to see if the size was correct, and it seems to be. It definitely was all right. But all of the other figures too, spiders and stuff. Now I did print out some things before it died, but all of the weather stuff happened, and then, well... It's really weird that the printer would go like that when it was in a period where I wasn't using it very much, but it is what it is, right? Uh, let's see. Master's Touch Brushes are still on sale at Hobby Lobby. So I'll, I'll see. Uh, I was actually thinking about heading over Hobby Lobby way just to see what other things might have been there too. Uh, we'll try and maybe do that uh, later on this week here. But everybody, please go check out our imprintable terrain because our imprintable terrain has just so many magnificent things. We could, we can show some pictures of some things here. Let's get to where's our well, of course our trolls right here. There they are. There's your trolls. Look at those guys again from our imprintable terrain. Now our imprintable, you want to throw a link in uh, to either your your MMF page or something like that. Feel free. Now, let me look at my original one here. We are also, of course, going to be getting into our Indian yellow and such, right, for our gold-ish trim right here. A little bit of the spinel, a little bit of the Van Dyke brown, maybe a little bit more of that spinel here. Oh, let's see, just tired. Uh, oh, ah, Cinder, well, congratulations there. Congratulations. Hopefully, uh, like I said, all is relatively well at this point, but congratulations on that. Oh, and uh, <clears throat> Armored Wolf just posted a link to the eBay uh, thing right there. So I just, some of those artisan guild things that I've done over the last year, couple years or something like that, 
I just I haven't put anything up on eBay in well years, and I thought I'll just uh, I'll put some of those guys up there because uh, those weren't things that I was currently using as uh, basically a teaching tool. Some of those were ones that I'd hung on to because I would show them in the middle of a stream, but now that we've been doing this so long, we've we kind of got that covered a little bit better, so we have other things that we can use to show that. But yeah, congratulations. I know that uh, that's going to, well, that's going to lead to some interesting sleeping patterns now for, for you guys in, in a little bit. So hopefully that's not too too difficult. What are we doing here? Oh, let's get a little bit of this indigo in on these ballistas here. Uh, yeah, let's hit this one too. What the heck? Even before we start wiping things off, why don't we just get some of this on here? Now, I don't want to get too much of that blue onto the gunnels here because, well, once the Indian yellow hits that, we'll get ourselves quite the green. If we wanted that, we just would start with the pearly and black, wouldn't we? Our lovely dark green. And what we got these? Well, we have these three plus. Look at look at these tiny little buggers here. Which, when you compare them to bigger ships here and that is quite the uh, quite the little dinghies right there so to speak let's see any I don't think this one's gonna get any of our magentas or whatever yeah, I don't think so I don't think we really need too much of that on here but you know it's way less of the liquid right way less of it and this one just has the one sail speaking of which while I've got this out. I'm just gonna hit this sail too while we're doing this, cause why not? Uh, so Van Dyke Brown again, maybe every so often, a little bit of the as full term. This I can go a little bit more liquid, cause we are not gonna be getting to this for a little while as far as removing the paint goes. I might need to chop up some. Oh, I might need to chop up some more sponges, although these are pretty tiny ships. So maybe we don't need that much in the way of sponges. Yeah, let's pop some more of this and here. And uh, hopefully everybody's Monday went relatively okay. I keep forgetting. I've already thinking that it's Friday because remember on Friday I kept thinking it was Monday, and people were getting mighty confused. And I said, "Oh, uh, yeah, guess it's Friday." Here, they we're almost done. I, I was really happy we were able to get a chance to mess around with all of our gold true metallic metals. That was super fun. Because, you know, messing with our own homemade metallic paints. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, I'm going to go all the way down here to the asphaltum again. All right. Then I'll get to the the main hull. Then I'm going to hit the uh, with the sponges. Then I'll get to the uh, Indian yellow. I think that'll be our that's going to be our pattern here. Uh, Rex, actually, that's what I'm using right now. Why? Because so say we all. you can't you can't just you got to have the carbon produced by charred animal bones, right? You gotta have that. And thank you so much, the Novice Brush, seven months of subscription. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> and there's Velfira. Like, well, there's other reasons, too. First of all, it dries really flat. Second of all, it's pretty darn opaque. And third, it actually does a little bit of staining. Not, you know, it's not like uh, Egyptian violet type staining. But still, it's it's got uh, it's got a little bit of punch to it. That ain't bad. Little bit of punch. Like I said, not quite the same. And you might even have to leave it on there for a little bit. But something's better than nothing. But it, like like <laughs> Valfair was saying, I mean, how can you resist charred animal bones for your paint? It's charred animal bones. Can't get much cooler than that. Uh, speaking of cooler, some of these colors are going to have to start getting a bit 
cooler because, well, they're facing towards the water, aren't they? That would be very cool. Here, we're just going to take our makeup sponges as always. Come on. There we go. We might have to cut some more of these, but we'll use what we got. So, Booking Kitties, how the heck are you doing? Uh, so, Quesos, uh, I'm, uh, a lot of people, well, you know, kids, uh, work schedule changes, lots of stuff going on. So, hopefully, no no uh, stressful life, life things. Maybe just, well, regular life things that aren't super stressful. <laughs> At least I hope so. I've uh, been taking a class with Cross Dog. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, uh, it's been a while since I've seen... I used to see their their Facebook stuff all the time, but I haven't seen one of the Crafts World uh, Facebook posts in a while. I'll just have to go look at their stuff. Uh, Bookend Kitty's getting some paperwork done. And you chill them. How you doing? So you chill them. I hope that you're doing well. So Quesos, yeah, we've been having a lot of fun with these things on the last several streams. And we're going to keep... This is basically going to be our Thursday thing for for a while. Because there's a lot of different things to explore. Uh, let's see. I think we're almost caught up. I think we're caught up. Yes, indeed. So I think it was... Uh, you were advised, all of you raiders, that we like to do... Well, we like to paint with oils here. And here's some of our other Empire of Dust ships that we have done. Now, what we're actually painting right now is one of these guys. We've done uh, some large ships. Here's another one of our larger ships and lots of glowy things. And, of course, well, then there's uh, the large Basilean ship and also the large Orc ship. Yeah, that's a mighty big... I think we've actually done three Orc ships now. In fact, yeah, three of the Orc ships. Here was, was that one. Uh, so, yeah, this is... Here's the other so version of that ship. So and you chill up. Thank you very much. We don't mind a little bit of a sub and a sip. Thank you much. Four months. Four months of subscribing there. Ah, that is appreciated. And, of course, I don't know, gosh, uh, Kesos, have you seen all the stuff we've been doing with our homemade fluorescent paints? Man, has it been a blast. I mean, they're just incredible. You know, just a couple of things that we've done with them. This is just a tiny, tiny sampling. They're really amazing. Uh, and there's, what, eight colors or something? And the other thing, oh, this is the big thing. These guys are actually opaque, which said nobody ever about fluorescent paint of any kind before but apparently the magic of these guys is that they are actually opaque to the point where you could almost substitute the fluorescent red for a cadmium red it's maybe not cadmium red opaque but it's mm, it's close enough probably well it's definitely cheaper too i would say Oh, let's see, it's 52 pounds I got to get up several feet on my table and then put things on it. Uh, let's see, oh, you missed your competition deadline, but it gives you more time. Uh, now if I could just get more time away from work. Ah, oh, you chill him out. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that's what really kind of messed up your, uh, your contest deadline right there. So sorry to hear that. But, you know, it's... Like you said, you got more time. You can save it. Well, maybe there's another contest or whatever. And I know some contests, they get kind of, uh, I don't know, they get kind of insistent that your, your miniature never be entered in any other contest before. Not sure how they would be able to uh, check that, but I think you know what I mean. All right, I think we've got enough of this wiped away so that we can... Uh, Get to the base down here. Let's see what we can do with that. Uh, let's see, so 52 pounds. I've got to get up several feet onto my table. That's uh, That sounds uh, a little bit on the dangerous side. But then, of course, this is the person who has spent most of his life on a ladder the last year or so. So living dangerously is something that we're very familiar with here. All right, here's our, our turquoise, our turquoise. Maybe a little, little bit of the Prussian blue, too. Why not? 
Again, turquoise up against the ship, then it becomes more of the indigo as it goes away, even a little bit more of the Prussian blue. Again, turquoise over here, like so. Just shove that right up against the hull. Now more of the Prussian blue as we work our way uh, away from that. Like so. And then out here, that's going to be more of the indigo. Back to our Prussian blue. And up to the, now. Uh, so Quesos, if you got any work in progress pictures or something like that, I know you just finished your streams so you don't have any pictures right now of what you were just doing but you know the you know the drill if you got any instagram pics or something like that just pop those in the chat so boy among the many things we have to do oh, we have to just do lots of rearranging of furniture here holy smokes not looking forward to that and i had spent a long time doing it and all that kind of that just all got for smizzled with all the the rain and the storms and the stuff so we're basically kind of back to square one almost with uh, the basement stuff again yeah throw a little bit of the cobalt in there and see right here oh there we go now you can see that right at the end here blammo good enough then we can wipe some of that away too but we'll let it sit there for just a bit and of course we used our heavy gloss gel to create, you can see there's actual wave texture there. Uh, in case I was just post, post, posted the latest work. Uh, let's see. So Sammy Poo has a new skylight for 4000 bucks, And not buying minis or paint for a while. Yeah, Sammy Poo. Boy, I remember that. That was just, oof. That was no, that was no picnic right there, was it? Not at all. All right. Well, Quesos, thanks so much for the raid. Thanks for hanging out, and you have a good one. So catch you later. So look, at, we're just kind of wiping this stuff away. Look at the difference from the other side. Uh, let's see. Booking place has a plan for getting it. I was only a bit sore for a day or two, and I was bringing it and a bunch of other stuff home from work. Uh -huh, that won't be quite. Hopefully, that's uh, hopefully it plays out that way. I sure hope it does. Okay, we've got that in place. Let's grab one of our... Do we need a micro filbert here? Well, I'm just going to have my micro filberts off to the side. We'll use this guy here. And let's just grab some of our brilliant yellow pail here. But yeah, I've got to get some furniture here. That's one of the reasons why we're... Well, there's a few reasons why we're doing the eBay auctions there. There, there is some more furniture that I have to get uh, just because of reorganizing things. Then I also have to, well, we know what the new camera is going to be. It's going to be the new phone. So we, that's part of the other reason why we're trying to scare up some extra funds because they are, well, they're junk in my phone. Kathy's phone already turned to junk. We had to replace that. But because of 5G, my phone goes dead in about a month or so. And I was hoping that, well, if we have to do that, maybe the camera on that phone is good enough to possibly let me maybe live stream some games of Lord of the Rings or something like that. So who knows? Yeah, Happy Heretic. Now, of course, you're familiar with Feebay, right? Uh, eBay is not the ideal place to sell anything because the fees are an absolute killer. And pretty much uh, free shipping is expected. Well, pretty much for everything, right? Free shipping is expected. It doesn't matter if it's eBay or Etsy or whatever. So that that will be one thing. Is uh, they they take an awful lot. It didn't used to be that way when we first started back 20 years ago. It was a little bit different. Hey, Snow Treasure, nice to see you again. Ah, Snow Trudger, it's been a while. Boy, Snow Trudger, have you, have you had a chance to, to see some of the 3D printed stuff and, well, the Armada stuff? 
that's uh, that's what we've been uh, cranking away on lately. Lots of Armada, lots of Lord of the Rings. Also, of course, those landscapes. You just saw those. Ah, I used to sell the dog leashes on eBay years ago. Yeah, the boy, it just it got really bad. Uh, I just basically said, you know what, we we got to scare up some funds real quick here. So I thought, what the heck, we're these are not they're not classroom aids anymore. So that well, we can we can let go of these guys. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think, Velfera. I think one of them was not the 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 one guy that's kind of a demon type guy on the lava base. He was not, but the other ones were painted in oils. I'm pretty yeah. I think everything else was painted with the oils. So uh, the vampire lady, the Titan Forge miniature. What was what was the other one? There's four of them. Oh, the uh, the undead guy on a horse. Actually, well, you can watch all of those. They're either on the YouTube channel or on the Twitch channel or both. So all of those, I think, have videos of some point or some kind. They all have videos. Here, we're going to add a little bit of our white here, lighten that up. Let's see, working 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. So free time is eating and sleeping. Yes, no treasure. That's a, that is a time-honored tradition here in Wappleville and also for Armored Wolf. Because you know how the saying goes, there's no sleeping in Wappleville. And we put the no sleep in Wappleville last night. That's for sure. Yeah, we. If I yawn like every two seconds, I apologize for that. But there was really no sleep last night. Uh, let's see. It's going to be mostly just using legs to slide it up there and then pushing around as opposed to lift and carry. Yeah, that's uh. You know, actually uh. I've got to get myself some of those uh, those little pads that you put on the bottom of furniture so that you can just kind of push that stuff around. I know I've carried a whole bunch of really heavy furniture down into the basement, uh, basically wrapped in a blanket, right? And just kind of <laughs> like sh just dropping it d d down the stairs, almost like you're just letting a sack just kind of gradually go down the stairs. Yeah, that's that's something that we did to get some heavier stuff down the basement. And like I say, Sammy Pooh, sleep is a uh, it's a curiosity, actually. I think Armored Wolf and I have uh, done that so little, it's really more of a weird curiosity. It, it's like something we just we read about. We're not really sure what the heck it is, but we keep hearing about this thing called sleep. Not quite sure what that is. Ah, uh, tonight you're working on... Uh, so are imprintable now do you have the mounted well you have both because if you got the Aomir thing you got both what what did you go with with your option on Aomir there because uh well I just I went with the throw in spear because with his high strength if you get lucky with the throwing spear that's uh, that's going to cause an ouchie on the way in so I just kind of went that away. All right, now let's get some of our lighter colors onto the base here, if we can, with one of these brushes here. Maybe a smidge of thinner on that. Maybe even a little, little bit of my turquoise I get on there. Ah, so everything has the throwing spears. Yeah, let's do some more of that. So we've been having some fun. Yeah, well, now that uh, uh, is it? Oh, the printing goes over. They're doing Rohan now, and Diwali. What's Diwali doing? Oh, they're doing their their dwarves. Oh uh, no, they're doing uh, Rangers. That's it. That's what Diwali is doing now. They're doing their Rangers. But we'll have to get that that new printer going. Uh, I'll just take down the the old Elegu and we'll stick this one in its place. At least that way I don't have to waste time trying to find a, a new spot for it. And then we'll, I guess we're going to start making more build plates. Yay. 
And as you can see, we're just trying to move gradually along the hull here. We don't need all of like a complete white line of foam around the hull. We're just going to go every so often. I'm also trying to follow the texture that was uh, put in here too. And then we'll, at the aft end of the ship here, by the stern where your rudder is, we're going to chop that up and get a little bit of a wake going here. Uh, Mantis painted some micro armor tanks. Uh, so Mantis, I painted a bunch of really small kind of, I got one 1,000 scale vehicles. We were using them for, uh, was it Memoir 44? So instead of just using tokens and counters, we actually got some of those really tiny scale things and we painted those up. We were using 172nd scale infantry also because it kind of mirrored the size of some of the uh, Memoir 44 stuff. Ah, uh, Lord Dave, well, I know you could use a whole bunch of Thursdays now that it's getting to be, you know, Reapercon ain't that far away. I know you would love to see some Thursdays. Armored Wolf and I would certainly love to see some Thursdays. I could use an entire week of them right now. Now, let's see. If you don't get them from someone, we will do Far East next year. Boy, our imprintable, that would be fantastic. I would absolutely love that. Of course, uh, the other thing we would love to see is the black uh, is the Corsair ships, right? The black ships. Now, after painting those orc ships, that's all that I could think of was the the Corsair ships. That's why we painted them in that scheme. All right, let's start to get some of our Indian yellow out here now, just like this guy. Just gonna grab me something here. Ah, this should do it. This should do it here. Uh, let's see, Thranu a little bit burned out. Can't get uh, myself to paint my stuff. Only managed to help a friend with some of his commission work. Ah, uh, Thranu, you don't want to, you don't want to let that go aside. Maybe just, uh, maybe something nice and simple, right? Something nice and easy. Look at this. Speaking of nice and easy, so I'm just literally dry brushing a little bit of Indian yellow over this. Look at this stuff. Isn't that crazy? Ah, uh, Mantis, uh, was it last summer, I think, that uh, Warlord did the, they did the Civil War game? I think it was last summer they released that. And, well, of course, Black Powder, uh, was it Pike and Shot, Hail Caesar, some of the other not bolt action versions. Uh, K-47, not really my thing. I, I know there's folks that do that, and that, and that's cool. But that's, yes, uh, I haven't had a chance to play bolt action in forever. And I don't know, I don't anticipate I'll get a chance to play it anytime soon, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. I think we're almost caught up there. Yep, almost caught up. Yeah, our imprintable. It would be really neat to see some of that because, well, think about it. There's half trolls. There's the Abrican Merchant Guard. Nobody's done. I'll tell you right now, nobody's been doing uh, Corsairs of Umbar. They're pirates. Well, I mean, that's why we got these. See if I can... Of course, they're just moving out of my hands here. That's why we got these, because these will be my Corsairs of Umbar. Uh, there's there's definitely some, some options on these guys as far as what weapons that they have. <clears throat> that they have. Sorry, voice is already starting to go. I think we're going to just uh, grab ourselves a cough drop here. Uh, hey, warm sis. Nice to see ya. Sorry about that. Uh, Thranual is a bit between worlds. Trying to paint acrylics with oil technique. Uh, well, Thranual, uh, you know, don't necessarily you don't have to push yourself too hard, right? I know you have, the, you have the high expectations. We always expect a little bit too much from ourselves because uh, we know exactly what we would like to the result we want right and that can uh, lead to us being a little bit rougher on ourselves Here, let's get a little bit more of our oh, I'm, I'm glad I just took a little peek over at that other ship there I wouldn't have seen this there we go so pun expected in Elsa days how you doing and Bitron, nice to see you, Bitron. 
Now, is uh, is this like some rare, some rare time that you actually have here to, to hang, or you, do you have to kind of try and go catch some sleep very soon because of all the crazy hours? So, uh, so Mantis, we did. Actually, well, here we went. Wait, wait, where's the uh, where's our calf stuff here? Now, here we go. So these are really tiny. Ah, uh, gosh, I think those vehicles are about an inch long, max, maybe not even an inch long. And then this is what we did on uh, the anniversary of Midway. So that's Richard Best's Dauntless right there. That was with acrylics, but still, that was really fun to paint that sucker up. Had a blast doing that. Uh, well, Thranuel, uh, we, you know, we were thinking... Just lately, there's been a lot of cause to think back to 20 years ago when, well, we'd never painted a miniature, that's for sure, and we had no idea what the heck we were doing, and it took years and years just trying to figure out what, what are we doing here. And I still learn new stuff every day, you know that. There's always something new to learn. I know sometimes having to learn new things is not always the most comfortable, most easy thing. But hopefully maybe just making some of those new discoveries or whatever kind of gets the mojo back for you. Uh, maybe uh, is is there a particular subject? You say, you know what, I would really just like to paint some undead stuff. And maybe don't don't even care if it's oils or acrylics or whatever. Just something that really turns you on. Speaking of turning us on, there's a Rathu. There's a Rathu to turn everybody on. So a Rathu, King of Norway, how the heck is everything going? I'm sure you're probably super busy right now with all the all the different things going on. Hey, Nessie. Now, let's see, Bitron's been working evenings, but for some reason I haven't been scheduled for work this week. So painting some 15 mil medievals. Oh, that's very cool, Bitron. Uh, let me see. Uh, the other thing, uh, too, that I, w I wish I could still keep going with it, but just for various reasons, we had to kind of take a little bit of a pause on some of our terrain stuff. But this is something that I really love to do. We've been building a whole bunch of terrain on stream. That's some of our Easterling stuff. Here's more of our Rohan terrain. There's the massive windmill the archery range in our great hall and uh, here's our one of our Rohan buildings uh, set on fire of course by our Dun Lendings and uh, our Wolves of Isengard legendary legion uh, Vetbod's been working on some cars now uh, Vetbod have you been doing any of the the candy finishes on those cars or is it more just kind of a standard type car finish and what are some of the, I'm trying to think of some of the products that do the chrome. Ah, oh, man, I know Gilbert uses a ton of that stuff. Ah, oh, boy, it's almost like a powder, but it turns into some chrome. So, Nessie, how the heck are you doing? <clears throat> We're trying to, uh, got uh, this ship too, and then we got this little guy that we never got to. He was hiding behind one of the big ships, so we got to get to him too. So, Wormsis, I hope that you're doing well. Aratho says it's starting to calm down, so it's time to jam to some favorite streams. Well, Aratho, that's always really cool. Now, this part just kind of broke away here. I will say that's one thing that can happen with these Armada ships is that, well, stuff breaks away. It just it kind of happens. Ooh, Nessie just woke up from a three-hour nap. Boy, Nessie, that sounds really good. No, man, that just, that sounds absolutely epic. I would love, well, I would love a three-hour nap every day, twice a day, no, four times a day for the next 10 years. That would be spectacular. You think I'm joking, too. I ain't joking. I am not joking. Oh, uh, we've been doing the Army Painter for the chrome, everything else, mostly the gloss, and then the flats. Man, it's driving me nuts that I can't think of what that stuff was. Uh, oh, that's uh, for funsies. 
take a little bit of that magenta and we're going to do a little bit of pin line wash in here. Let's get some darks back into this. But you notice we're just touching the brush to it. That's it. Uh, let's see. So Rasu, yeah, sleeping 12 hours a day, every day for the next 20 years. Actually, that would take us about 40 years to get caught up at that rate on the sleep that we've missed. But yeah, that's how much sleep we've missed over the last 40 years. Oh, oh, candy apple. The candy apple red would probably look nice on the Porsche. Yeah, the, the candy colors. I Interestingly enough, if you take the... Oh, what the heck are they? The Badger Ghost Tints. You can almost do a little bit of candy type stuff with those. But Arathu, that's a, it's kind of funny because uh, we always joke about you know sleep is this barbaric custom that that people do, and that it's uh, not only do you just end up drooling on yourself most of the time, it's very unproductive and it's very uncivilized, right? That uh, you're you're not getting anything done. How the heck are you supposed to get stuff done if you're sitting there drooling on yourself? all night long. Again, a little bit more of our pin line wash in there. And we got Tall's in the house. Tall's, how you doing? Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, beauty doesn't, it's not quite the accurate description. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a parochial type of a term. We should have something far more forceful, like drop dead gorgeous or something like that, maybe. I think something like that is a little bit more appropriate. Just Sleeping Beauty doesn't really describe the the vista that would be moi. See, I have a lot of Tamiya tints from when I used to do car models. Uh, that Yeah, the... Well, I know that... Uh, oh, filters. That, that's what Mig Ammo calls those things, filters. Uh, talls were just... Uh, Oh, we just uh, got our first episode of Army Painting Series 27 done. So we're doing a little bit of an experiment. We're using the Green Stuff World Stoneworks, the, the building bits here. Kind of found out the hard way that hot glue doesn't really stick to these things at all, unfortunately. But, I mean, it was, well, it was enough to at least get us through the basing episode. Yeah, Worm says, if you want to th uh, throw that up in the chat there and uh, so that people can look at it, maybe give you some advice there. Uh, so Worm says, too, you can always uh, you know, throw me uh, a picture on Instagram or something like that. That way I can check it out and uh, see what kind of nifty things you're doing with that. All right, I think I'm going to get a little, little bit of the black spinel work its way in there just to... All that down right by the water here. Uh, let me see. I think we're all caught up, right? There we go. So, Rathu, have you had a chance to look at third edition Sigmar anymore and, and kind of develop more of an uh, opinion on it? Uh, yay or nay? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Because I know last time you were in here, you said, ah, it's, uh, it's way too early to tell if you like it or not. Oh, yeah, Worm says uh, that would not be a bad idea. That is, uh, I mean, I can only do so many social media platform type things, and that one is a very important one. So we're just going to darken these guys down, but... Fortunately, we've got ourselves you know, a handy dandy little uh, right there. So let's see, a worm sis has some discord links. All right, so yeah, worm sis. So uh, that's the other thing, too, is that uh, if it's going to be something that maybe is more on the risque side, that might be something that we maybe don't do the links to. 
because again, this is supposed to be more of a work safe type. Now, obviously, people have to click on that. Uh, what do we got now? Oh, Lord Dave, the, the mammoths, so their first battle. So, Lord Dave, I think you were telling me what the rules are on those guys, and they, they certainly sounded pretty nasty, didn't they, when you described them? So are, are they something that's just good as a walk them right into units, or are they something that's good as a, like a cleanup hitter or something like that, where you just let them smash into stuff that's uh, already engaged? Here, let's get a little bit of our... I'm just going to put this along the edge of the base here because that's going to let me know just how light or dark that's got to be. All right, let's do this. We're going to get this out of the way so that we can just do that little bit of a black line along the side there because that lets me know. See, that looks a whole lot lighter than it did just a second ago. Everything is relative. This is why we say don't do the black primer stuff, right? Because next to black primer, everything looks light. By the way, this is just brush on, what is it, the light flesh primer? Yeah, that's just the light flesh, flesh primer from Badger. The Steino Res. That's all it is. Just all of these ships have just been brush on primer. I haven't used the airbrush in, well, months now. Uh, it's not because I don't want to use the airbrush. It's just it was kind of at ground zero during the big uh, weather uh, stuff going on. So that has not been down there lately. All right, there we go. That's uh, a little bit easier to see. Now we also might uh, darken down our waves around the outside. Ah, uh, your son used them. He basically trampled right over a couple of the units about face and then trampled back again. Ah, uh, so now Lord Dave, uh, so you were doing free folk. What was he doing? Or no, he had free folk. What were you using there? And Arathu is a dozing delight. Uh, I have a bit. Uh, to thumb slightly up, the army, or your armies are not the strongest right now, but that'll change. And uh, just do some side armies. Uh, let's see. A lot of changes is good, but before more armies get codexes, the meta is uh, kind of stale and monotone. Oh, you saw, uh, I was kind of... Uh, something told me, Lord Dave, that you had Baratheons. So all of the armor of the Baratheons just kind of went boom <laughs> when stomped on by some Oliphants. Yeah, the, the Baratheons didn't like the Oliphants too much, did they? Look, Mr. Frodo, Oliphants. So I can definitely see the the Baratheon. Well, it seemed like a lot of things stomped on the Baratheons. Uh, oh, Lord Dave, what's the what is the Baratheon calf called again? It's been a while since. Well, I never actually had those in my hands, so I don't know. That's why I don't know what the heck they're called. And of course, uh, somewhere out there, Nessie, Nessie saying, "No, don't, don't, uh, don't stomp the Baratheons." Uh, let's see. The snow has white and full of tears. Uh, Rex, I obviously I haven't tried any of that stuff. What is that supposed to be for, anyways? Because I've heard people mention that a couple of times. I have no clue what the heck that's supposed to be for. All right, we're going to take some of our phthalo green here, uh, mix it with some of our lighter color. Again, a little bit of turquoise there. Uh, so champions of the stag. Uh, I think stag knights, that's right, stag knights. I, they weren't sentinels. Oh, was it was it sentinels that had the two hammers? Yeah, because stag knights they they only they still only had one hammer. That's right. It was the sentinels that had the two hammers. Um. So yeah. Again, if you're doing something like this, like you want the 
You want to do that? Just get the heavy gloss gel because you can use it for so many other things. You can use it right to create your fire effects here. Let's just see if we can't grab this out. You can use it to make your fire effects. You can use it to make your icicles. Where's our icicles here? Like our icicles there on the end of that that tree branch and stuff. Just get the thing that's the most multi-purpose. All right, uh, what the heck? I'm gonna let just a little bit of our turquoise reflect onto the hull of the ship there. We're gonna do the same over here, just reasons. Maybe a little bit back over here, good enough. What did I do on the bow there? So we did do just that little bit of Prussian blue and that was it. Okay, do some of that now. Prussian blue. So say we all. Oak and brush. Thank you so much, because we could use one of these. And look at that, six months in total. Thank you so much. That is appreciated. I uh, definitely could use that. So thank you very much, Oak and Brush. How's about we also hit our sale right here? And we have a second sale that we need to get to. For this one in particular, it might have to hit it with the with the heat gun there. Well, hair dryer. <laughs> I don't want to use my heat gun because that will instantly liquefy. <laughs> it will instantly turn our empire of dust into liquid. Oh, let's see. I mean, Rex, you can always uh, you can always give it a shot and see what the heck happens. Uh, just for me, I'm just going to keep using the uh, Mona Lisa odorless thinner. That's uh, that's what we like. That's what we's going to use. But not everybody can get their paws on that, so I can understand. Actually, oh, that was uh, that is indigo. So let's uh, well, what the heck? Let's do a little change here. And Rex, what did you say? It was only three bucks or something like that. Give it a shot, Rex. You just have to let me know what uh, what you find with it. Maybe there's some kind of interesting, fun, new thing it can do. Yeah, I'll let those get a little bit darker, too. Why not? Let's see if we can maybe start to throw some lighter things on our... So after, well, let's, let's do the Prussian blue over here. Yeah, okay, well, it was right here. But you see how that covers that? The only reason that covers is because the exist this this is a different consistency, right? The previous layer was thinner. That's thicker. That's why it's gonna stick there. And well, let's do this. There we go. Uh, so Arathu, are you doing the uh are you also in the the hobby hangout thing? Cause uh it was Monday night, right? So they must be doing their hobby hangout thing. Obviously, if we weren't streaming, we would join them. But I don't think uh, I don't see that ever happening, unfortunately. Do we do any other blue? I mean, just uh, oh yeah, we did some on the back of the hall, and that's it. Okay. Ah, boy, Thousand Young, welcome back. It, we were just talking about you today because we don't often get a chance to bring this out to say, hello, Thousand Young, how you doing? Nice to see you. Uh, it's a little bit late to do anything, uh, to do any hobbying. Because uh, what is it there, Arathu? Let's see, if it's 8 o'clock here, was it about 1, is it 2 in the morning there, almost 2 o'clock in the morning? So let's get to, where's our grod? Speaking of something we might have to redo with our newfound knowledge. So yeah, nice to see you again, Thousand Young. Okay, so I thought it was either two or three. I can never remember what's Central Time and what's Eastern European Time. So this is something, this entire thing is made out of Sculpey. The dinos, the grand itself, the carriage, everything is made from Sculpey. We would do this differently now. That piece of uh, foam right there. I think it's 24 inches long by 16 inches wide. 
Now see those two trolls down the back? Those are metal trolls that I had to chop apart and then alter the pose so that they were pushing the darn thing. That'll tell you how big that is. You see those orcs that are up there on the carriage? Those are the metal orc archers from GW. So that's how big that sucker is. That'll give you a little bit of an idea as to size. We had to sculpt the two dinos that were pulling it. Now, Grand itself is hollow, sort of. If I was to do that again, I would just make a gigantic wad of uh, tinfoil and just maybe cover it in a little bit of Sculpey, and it would weigh a ton less. It, it does actually move. It was hanging on a chain. So, yeah, there was uh, three sets of chains down there. And, oh, we got it. one more. There he is. So, again, that is something that we did probably, I don't know, 2004, 2005, something like that. Ah, a thousand young, just kind of, just kind of hanging on. The, there's been some uh, mischief with the 3D printing side of things. The surprise, surprise, the Elegoo, the screen on that died, being a color screen. So instead of trying to screw around with maybe replacing that and doing other things, all I'm going to do is just, I've got the uh, Sonic Mini 4K. We'll fire that up, put it in its place, and hopefully get that thing going. So I'm going to double check. we got the same thing going on here for both sides. Also, going to hit him. Got to get him some of that darker skin tone there. And, uh, yeah, pun expected, it says the Grand is their spirit animal. Did we get all of our blue before we get to the one true brush? So the one true brush, it's its taken many forms over the year. The Over the years, I should say. Where's one of our pristine versions of that? We've got ourselves a pristine one. Ah, here it is. So right now, if you were to get something like this from Hobby Lobby, what is it, 12 of these for 5 bucks? So this is what it looks like now. Back in the day, it used to have a green handle. Here's, uh, let's see, we've got another one right here. This has actually been kind of cut down. Where's our red-handled one? So here, let's do our three examples here. So pristine, actually has a really nice point. Very good for working with. Then they start getting, <laughs> look, look at the difference there. They start getting a little bit beat up, but... This actually makes a really a magnificent kind of a dry brush or maybe even a dress for, brush for applying powders. But we use these all the time for our opening stages, right, our pre-glaze. Once they get really kind of destroyed, and you can see this has seen a little bit of an activity, becomes a spatter brush, stippling brush, right? It's, take, it's uh, what, four different color handles over the years. You can chop it up into all kinds of different shapes and such, but it's always, in the end, it's just going to be the one true brush. And it used to come in a green handle. That's that's why the picture there has a green handle instead of gray. That's how it used to, that's how it used to come. And Armor Wolf just put up the link there. Again, available from Hobby Lobby. And, well, look, what were we using for our pre-glaze? The one true brush. We used to use it to make filberts until we found the Royal Lang Nickels and realized that we could make our own homemade filberts out of those guys. So, yep, yeah, that is uh, that is the one true brush way, way back in the day. And it's uh, it's hilarious. We still still use those all the time. Now, I'm going to double check real quick here to make sure. Do we have any? Yes, we have some glowy things there. So let's maybe do some of that. Might throw a little bit of my... No, nah, no, nah, I think we'll go with the Chloe Magenta stuff first. This is our homemade oil paints, remember. And that's about all there is as far as the glowy stuff on this one anyway. Uh, well, actually, Arathu, I don't snore. Um... But we do, uh, I would just settle for uh, Galactic Overlord. That is uh, that is the one name that we usually prefer to answer to. So Galactic Overlord would be just fine. Uh, some people said, what about, you know, 
ruler of Earth or something like that. And we thought, well, that's a that's a nice start. I mean, you, you start really, really, really small and you work your way up, right? But uh, I think a Galactic Overlord is probably the most uh, most appropriate method of addressing. Uh, so pun expected. Hopefully you've been doing good. Uh, pun expected. If you want to toss some links to your your latest KDM stuff there, that could be fun for folks to see. Let's get a little bit of our yellow slash gold into here now that we've started to introduce at least a little bit of the reflect or the uh, object source lighting stuff. Not going to be a lot of it. I'll tell you that right now. The other the other ship is different. That will have a bunch of it. Gonna see if we can't lighten this up, and just like all of those rose nights that we did, all it's gonna take, we just pop a little brilliant yellow pale on here. That's really gonna change this around. Bam! Look at that. Yeah, but you must have dark to show light. So, got as much of the light as we could now. So we did those, uh, the darker pin washing, other, and then just let it sit there. Had to be left alone for a while. You keep hammering away at the same area over and over again and just not let that paint set. That's where you're going to start getting some of your mud action going. And I think that's not quite what people want. Uh, so, Valfira, that's going to have to wait until Armored Wolf is done with the show season. So, that will be later in the fall. Also, to uh, still waiting on some of the the packaging supplies. Uh, as well, it's especially now that we know that you can use the heavy gloss gel and mix that with the Armored Wolf uh, fine, extra fine crushed glass, and do lots of fun things with it. Here, I'm gonna get me just a little bit of a. Sneak a little bit of a lighter tone in there. Uh, mud action can be quite hot. It all depends on the action, who is doing it. Yeah, most people, uh, well, there are some talented mudders when it comes to oils. Usually they're the usually they're the beginners, though. Act that's ironically enough that the best mudders are usually the beginners. And then the the more experience you get with the oils, the the less effective you are with the mud making. So you better you better get, maximize your mud career as much as you can early on, because eventually eventually you have to to fade away for the next uh, the next new wave to come along, which will be far more adept at creating mud than you are. Yeah, so Valfair, that's just, again, something that part of it was just getting the packaging. It was just it was getting very, very difficult. And then, you know, we weren't quite sure, is there going to be a Dragon Con? Is there going to be a Gen Con? And then, well, then they said that, and you got no choice but to be there. And then it was, well, let's... Uh, Let's take a bit of a pause on the basing stuff and let's get some stuff made for these conventions now. Ah, D. Marino, it's funny. We uh, you had me talking about uh, about the the camels. Pretty much most of the broadcast here, because I, I saw the the link that you sent me there. Now those guys just they print them right. They don't have actual files that you can print. They print them for you. Uh, well, actually, uh, of course, oak and brush, we want uh, its equal opportunity here. So everybody can be a mudder. You don't have to be a fodder. You could also be, everybody can be a mudder. It doesn't matter uh, who you are or what you identify as. You can always be a mudder. That is until you you get more and more adept at what you're doing with your with your oils. And then suddenly you can't be a mudder anymore. Well, 
you, you should you shouldn't be a mutter anymore I guess is maybe that's more like it ah so you can get them from Caballero miniatures directly okay I th I thought so I just unfortunately I, I was uh, trying to get set, things set up for the stream here so didn't have a chance oh wait a minute heck well this is the other thing that we were doing here let me see if I can find this here. Let me see if I can find this picture here. Ah, there we go. All right, there. So this was me playing the role of hairstylist today. So I was bleaching Kathy's hair. That was uh, That's the reason we were a little bit later tonight. So, yeah, that was, that was me doing the hairdresser thing. That is my alter ego. Uh, that, is, uh, that is Maurice. He is one of the finest hairdressers in all of the south side of Chicago. Because, you know, that's what we do. So in case the whole miniature painting thing doesn't work out, we can always just uh, switch that career over and start doing some hairdressing. Now, Andelis, how are you doing? Nice to see you again. We're adding to our Empire of Dust fleet. We got, what, three ships here? So we have this one. This one's going to have some glowy thing on it. This is going to have the most glowy thing, this tiny little bugger right here. And uh, just adding that to, I think, you, I think you were in when we were painting this guy, right? Let's see, Rathu says, uh, therefore, like that, almost uh, think like Maurice would also work for Trump. And uh, Angelus, I, I think you saw our latest landscape of Middle Earth right here. It might, I'm trying to think, uh, I don't know exactly what the next one would be yet, if it's going to be, say, more like a Rivendell or a Lothlorien. Yeah, let's go a little bit more this away. Uh, maybe even, who knows, uh, a little bit of Osgiliath. Just get some ruins there. That could be interesting. Or maybe us, Gilead, before the fall. Also want to see uh, maybe we do some Arnor stuff as well. Also, before the fall of Arnor. And then, of course, well, we've got... I want to maybe start doing some seascapes and some spacecapes. I think, actually, the next thing I might do just for funsies could be maybe the, the black ships of the Corsairs. Because, you know, after doing all this stuff, I'm just kind of maybe in the mood for a little bit of a, something going on at sea, perhaps. Now, I did get, so they keep pushing this back. I was all excited that they said August 6th. Next thing you know is August 16th. So there's, uh, they're kind of pushing back the time on this. So we ordered... Uh, what the Princeton or something like that, some kind of synthetic brushes. We'll see how those work. I have no expectations. I have very low expectations, in fact. Uh, so Tall's, uh, I, I think, uh, well, also, too, uh, I want to maybe try and get some of the, some of my Corsairs put together so that maybe we can start doing some basing on those. And, and do a little bit of painting on them. I, I don't know if we want, uh, you know, tight, shiny pants Corsairs or not, but we'll we'll have to get those guys going because how can we have our battles at battle at war at Middle Earth and uh, war at sea in Middle Earth if we don't have those Corsairs? Uh, let's see. Visited another streamer. Who I made a card for, and they didn't see their card. I don't think I've seen. Uh, I'm not actually. You'll have to describe what this is. I'm gonna look at. Nope, that's a cheer. So you'll have to describe the card to me, because uh, unless it's just like a, unless it's an e-card. If it's an e-card, I don't think I've seen that. Could be wrong. Let me take a look at my other ship here and see just... Oh, okay, we, we can build up the lights. 
fairly well here. Okay, good to know. Let's get some of our like that because this is this is the last of the quad, quadruple zeros here. Once this thing is gone, that is that's the last of them, and this thing is already starting to show its. Uh, uh, oh, and that's, uh, yeah, I don't do, uh, maybe someday we, we start doing the Discord stuff, but I don't do anything on Discord right now. I know Laminess is over there, <laughs> which uh, just perturbs Laminess and some other folks to no end, and I, I do apologize about that, but there's a million other social media platform things that I do, and Discord, I just can't tack that one on right now. Uh, Instagram is definitely the way to go, Angelus, because I post stuff. That's one of that's one of those social media things that we post to all the time. So that is definitely a place to go do that. I'm gonna see if I can't get my God, my lighter toads right here. Also, a couple right there, and then on the water because we actually haven't done the lightest stuff here yet on our water ah th no problem no problem and hopefully we'll see that uh later tonight once we're done here and let's see what is it 3 a.m for arathu so i'm sure that arathu is probably going to be uh going to be hitting the hay pretty soon Uh, so, Rathu, before you head out, we just want to say it was uh, great to see you. Now, well, I'm I'm glad that you're not too, at least initially, too disappointed in the new Age of Sigmar. Now, that is definitely appreciated, Angela. It's uh, but for sometimes you you never quite know if the, especially before we started doing the Twitch thing, I just wasn't sure if. Is the message getting out there at all? And then, then the Twitch thing kind of happened, and boy, that really, that did help get the message out there. And it's been really nifty. Now, I will say, and this is this is some long range planning here. Uh, it looks like uh, September 11th is a Saturday, so that is for sure going to be a 2D art stream. Just, just mark that on your calendars. Come hell or high water, we are doing a 2D art stream on Saturday, September 11th. There's, there's reasons for that. There are definite reasons why we're doing that. That is a very significant day for, for us. So, and Kathy and I was actually my sisters were here visiting earlier today, and we were telling them about the significance of that. Uh, let's see. You make me want to be splashing around in that water to not go to bed. Well, um, it might get a little gooey. Where's uh? Oh, wait a minute. Here, let's uh. Mm. So, Arathu, I, I'm sure you wouldn't mind uh, slothing around a little bit of extra heavy gl gel gloss, right? I mean, you know, that would just be uh, that would just be a party on Saturday. A little bit of heavy gloss gel partying, and of course. Of course, like, hey, hey, man, you guys got any quarters in there? They're like, oh, we don't have any qu What's a quarter? We have pieces of eight. Yar. So, <laughs> Big Jim, how the heck are you doing? Uh, if everybody could please give Big Jim Slay to follow. Uh, guess what? Guess what Big Jim's doing? He's doing painting streams. Yes. And he told me very soon he's going to adopt a 24-hour-a-day, 8-day-a-week painting schedule, a painting streaming schedule. So be sure to jump on there and watch Big Jim paint all kinds of fun uh, Bones 5 miniatures. Maybe I might have overestimated how many days he's going to be streaming painting every week. But you can also catch him, uh, I believe it's this Wednesday, right, uh, Big Jim? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, it's going to be Saturday for uh, Truths and Liars, right? So uh, definitely go check out the Pyro Club. 
and Big Jim is going to be DMing one of the uh, finest role-playing groups that's out there right now on Twitch. So that is on the Pyro Club, and also, again, check out Big Jim Slade doing the painting streams. And Dio, there we go. So Wednesday is Truths and Liars. There it is. So you'll really get a kick out of it. Are you guys, uh, Big Jim, are you guys four sessions in thereabouts now? Is this uh, going to be your third or fourth, se at least your th fourth session maybe? Sometimes I get them mixed up with the uh, world building streams. All right, the other thing that we're doing here, we're not just adding lighter colors here. We're also doing a little bit of stippling there. Because we got ourselves a blending brush here. We got V in the house, too. How you doing, V? Uh, if everybody could please also give V a follow, that would be fantastic. V well, also does lots of role-playing stuff, but she also does her piano streams, and she does some painting streams as well. So please go check out V. So V, Big Jim, Slade, Dio, lots of folks for you to follow. Look at that. You have a plethora of folks to follow. So it will be the fourth session. Okay. Uh, I'm just Oh, and Nerryfield, how are you doing? Ah, Nerryfield, you know, I was uh, I tried to get you a VIP badge, and I typed that in to Twitch, and it's like, there's no Nerryfield 4. And I went, wait a minute, that can't be right. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and do that again, Nerryfield, because I was like, wait a minute, how, how come uh, Nerryfield... Uh, won't uh, won't let me give you the VIP badge, so sorry about that. Hopefully we can get you one of those. I'm gonna add me some more of my lighter tones right here. Not so much up there, but definitely down here. And this is the. I knew that these oils were gonna make the sails a heck of a lot easier. We were just gonna be able to sail through them, huh? See what we just did there? Yeah, that right there is linguistic gold maybe latinum it might be so good it might just be latinum every Ferengi wishes they could do something like that ah boom bang nice to see you again how the heck are you doing i won't really i almost said happy friday because with with everybody in the chat there i was i was thinking oh yeah pyro club pyro club on friday now, and at some point, too, also, uh, Big Jim Slade also ma DMs the Monster of the Week. That's Harlan's Heroes. That is uh, usually on Sundays. And at some point, that last that last game is going to happen, and and the and the uh, Harlan's Heroes, at least that particular group, they will have completed their adventure. Look, we even got Kathy in the house, too. Well, of course, uh, hopefully Kathy's in the house because, you know, it would be really... <laughs> let, me, oh, let me do... Here, let's see. Uh, it, unless it's like, wait a minute, who else? Who else's hair did I just do tonight? Now, of course, I didn't do any of the styling. Kathy did all the styling. I just, I just uh, got rid of the color. That's all. And there's, oh yeah, that's, uh, Kathy's going to be streaming on her new, well, her new, well, her, not her new name, but as her regular name. Uh, I think we're all, uh... now actually, yes, uh, it's really interesting, uh, Nessie. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen some of the other uh, hair colorings that I've done. Whenever we do Kathy's hair, uh, I just call that a it's a one to one exercise. So instead of the half scale and one eighth scale busts from Blackheart models, whenever we we do Kathy's hair, that's a a, a life scale or life size bust. Uh, let me see. Hey, Tackeroth, how are you doing? Uh, so Takarot, the interference gold is handy because it's kind of like a highlight color, right? But if you have the iridescent pearl white, which of course I don't actually have that sitting around here. I have the tube of it. Where's the tube? There we go. So if you have something like Hello, this, that can also be... Spark 
Oh, my God. That could be your highlight for the golds. Uh, I just uh, the interference gold is just really, really handy. Hello, little hobbits. It's baby girl. He's like, oh, come on, man. Seriously, I'm I'm not sailing west in that. And then, like a, a third of a hobbit could sail in this thing. It's like, yeah, man. And there's statues on it, too. So it's not small enough. You got statues, too. Where am I supposed to sit in this thing, man? It's like it's a long journey to the west. So thank you so much for that follow. Yeah, Nessie, I don't know if I think I don't know if we've actually had a chance to post some of those, but we have uh well, geez, I don't know how many times I've done the the hair coloring over the course of the years, but it's definitely been more than once. And it's uh I usually have a couple of brushes. We usually have maybe, I don't know, three, four colors ish, something like that. And we just we just color away. Um, I think we're all caught up there now. Uh, so Takaroth, I do believe that is USA Art Supply that makes the, all of the interference powders. Uh, Valfera, you got those off of Amazon, right, from USA Art Supply? At least I seem to remember that. So yeah, Kathy, uh, I think we always like to say whenever we do the uh, the bleaching of Kathy's hair and we color it, we say that Kathy has a new head. So yeah, that's uh, that's me, uh, Kathy getting a new head because the old one gets thrown away. Put the new one on there. You just hope that uh, you don't have any kind of mix up between metric and imperial units or anything like that. Otherwise, the new one might not fit on there as well. And Valfera can confirm that it is USA Art Supply and attained from ye old Amazon. All right, we've darkened up that. Let's get, wait, wait, let's get some more of our black spinel out here too. We could use some of that. Uh, Takaroth, yeah, it's, and uh, obviously just using the linseed oil right and it's made the same way we made let's see do i have any of my other inter ah here we go same way we made the interference red same way we made all of the other green stuff world stuff heck it's the same way we made our fluorescent paints right now that's the one thing about these sails is you always got <laughs> that crazy resin piece in there so we just put a little bit of bluish black in there just so that it sort of fades and we don't really notice it very much. We do have, boy, we haven't used perline black in a while, have we? Let's get some of our brilliant yellow pale into some of our perline black and just shift that away from all of the reddish tones. We do have another sail that needs to get painted there too. In fact, while we're thinking about it, this is our other sail right here. It's just take away some of the paint here so that we can get this thing glued in uh, so Takaroth it's not necessarily any better it's now you can't get interference gold they don't have that so that's another reason why uh, the, the whole reason why we the main reason anyway why we got the powders is for the folks that are overseas who can't get Williamsburg stuff, but they can get the interference powders. It may not necessarily be from USA Art Supply, but at least they can get the powders. And of course, you can get linseed oil anywhere. That doesn't matter. You can get linseed oil. All right, here's our indigo again. I really like the indigo, or sorry, not indigo, the Williamsburg interference paints. They work really well, but again, they do not have interference gold. They've got four, red, green, blue, and violet. Let's get this off to the side there, and then we got to get our Indian yellow on these two areas. 
Oh, what the heck. I'm going to take my... Where's my big old... There it is. There you are. Oh, let's see. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it's it's decent stuff. You would be amazed at how similar it is. Yeah, let's get our lighter blue... Or lighter... Uh, avoiding the blue with our lighter color here. Ah, so if you just want the gold, you can get the gold by itself. But it was, yeah, it was nice to have the, the powder option too. Now, the interference paint, it actually, it was really funny. When I had the powders, then I could really, really tell why the interference paint, when it comes out of the tube, is just all crumbly. I mean, super, super dry and crumbly. And uh, I, I anticipated that when I was making the pigments or taking the powdered pigments and such. And it was kind of handy to have used the regular actual interference paints first. All right, let's uh, get our... Where's that darker tone here into the shadow areas on our mast before we get that thing attached. Now, I might have to mix up a little bit of green stuff to get this thing attached. And I'm not going to actually attach this thing just yet. We're not quite there yet. And then I will have to take the heat gun, uh, well, again, the hair dryer or whatever to that. Where's my Indian? There you just, there's my Indian yellow. I'll let that just mix with everything that's already here. That's why we have ourselves a nice dark yellow already. Why do we have to paint this in advance? Because, well, those sails are a little bit close to each other. It'd be kind of tough to reach that, wouldn't it? So we got to do that now. It also means I don't have to do a whole bunch of super detail on this part of the sail, right? I mean, why would I bother doing that here let's get a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale and man look at what that does tinting up that yellow poof there we go uh no valfera it's uh not to the consistency of the tube because that would be worthless unfortunately the tube is just super dry and crumbly and just totally unusable you couldn't even paint with it, like as a, on a regular painting. So no, I, I basically make it uh, much thinner, like like what would just come out of one of the tubes here. Because yeah, the the paint out of the tubes is just totally unusable, at least for what we want to do with it. Very much a dry brush again. There we go. Because I was really shocked when I first uh, Valfair, when I first saw that stuff come out of there. I went, what the heck is this? I just didn't realize how they'd made it, that they had made it from powders like that. So I went, what in the world is going on here? This is nuts. Now let's see here. Let's uh, lighten this up a bit. I'm going to actually take the, yeah, some of our brilliant yellow pale here really juice up this here magenta which this is a much more opaque magenta something like it was a quinacrinol magenta yeah that's a bright magenta but it ain't opaque like this see how that just covered right there yeah quinacrinol magenta ain't gonna do that even if you're mixing white with it so love me these these darn fluorescent powders. And I still have to do the glow-in-the-dark stuff because I think that would be hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. To have some... Well, I guess I'd have to get more Army of the Dead figures because I'm down to maybe one or two Army of the Dead guys left. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to paint by black light. I don't think that's going to work terribly well, but we can always try and maybe take some video of them in black light or whatever and see what that does. Uh, 
uh, so Velfira, it's a some of they're all each one of them is a different consistency. I forget which ones, and uh, I think maybe the green one of them took a little bit more linseed oil, one of them took less, and some of them took almost no thinner, and some took more. Uh, every single one is always different, just like the uh, the rest of the oil paints. There is no one solution. Each one, that's why you just got to kind of mix them all individually, one at a time, and just to see what the heck happens, right? Because there's just, there, unfortunately, there is no one true brush when it comes to the the oil paints and how to how much you thin them down. That's been a little bit of a surprise to me over, you know, the course of the last year plus that we've been working with them. Uh, at least in in the much more expansive format that we are now we we were using them before but nowhere near like we are now yeah, let's get some more of our magenta here now so big jim uh speaking of object source lighting which we're starting to fool around with here so uh, say we all so we're going to be doing uh uh, uh, is one of your next streams, is that going to be uh, trying out the object source lighting? And thank you so much, Cat Herder. That is appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, well, Cat Herder, hopefully, uh, speaking of consistency, it, maybe that just kind of opens up a little bit of a window and then eventually the, just the, that, that light goes on and it's all solved. And everything progresses. So, were there what kind of improvements did you see as we were just kind of uh, hunting hunting down solutions for that? Because sometimes you know, it's not always problem solved completely. Sometimes it's incremental, right? Yeah, actually, well, we haven't done a film noir, and since we have two ships next to each other, this should be interesting. Let's get these two side by side. Let's do a little bit of film noir here. I know uh, Val Ferris still has some time with us yet, but let's do a, a little film noir action to see these two puppies side by side right here. Interesting. Wow, okay. Yeah, well, the value pattern, very similar, right? Pretty darn similar. But yet, not all there yet. We still have a little ways to go yet. Uh, let's see. So that is uh, a gin and blackberry ginger ale by Val <laughs> Uh, when you see this video, I still actually have to finish two more segments of this tonight. I, I have to do some priming, and then I actually was going to paint one of the bases. But there was there was a lot of mischief and mayhem filming this, so it's going to be one of it's going to be one of those episodes. Yeah, it's going to be one of those kind of episodes where I'll say, well, maybe we can do this without breaking that as it breaks, and just uh, yeah, a lot of mischief like that. So. There, there will be folks that certainly get a certain amount of raw entertainment just out of seeing things break and all of the kinds of mischief happen. But sometimes that's how videos go. And I think I even say in the video, it's like, well, just uh, if, you, if things are going to go sideways for you or, or just not the way you expect, especially when you're experimenting, yeah, it ain't no big deal. Yeah, Nessie, you know, it's it's been a while. Well, obviously, there's no pallet here, but remember the days the pallet used to be sitting right here? And how many times did I drop, literally just drop a miniature, boom, right down into the pallet right there? Now, ironically enough, that's not why the pallet's not there anymore. It's, it's off to my right because, well, now I can actually have it in, well, at least somewhat in focus. Whereas here, it was just completely blurred and out of focus. Also, it lets me do much larger things. 
Uh, oh, it, <laughs> you know, Nessie, you know what started it all? Why the palette is where it is now? And, of course, this is going to give uh, Nessie, and he knows exactly what the heck is coming, man. He knows this is coming. Yep. It was painting this bus, which we have another one of those. Now that we have all the interference paints, the metallics, the fluorescence, we'll have to paint this one just using, like, nothing but fluorescence. Oh, yeah, nothing but fluorescence and interference paints with that should be a, and a, or Egyptian violet because I don't know if we had Egyptian violet back then. Did we? I don't think we had Egyptian violet then. I think we were using like alizarin or something. Yes, and uh, we'll we'll explain what uh, what Nessie's talking about as we welcome in Tiago. How you doing? Nice to see you again. So yes, uh, that was at least a seven. No, that was more like a ten hour stream that I did or whatever. And I was so tired, and plus it was still pretty new to streaming at the time. I accidentally left the stream on for hours. So yes, for hours, that thing was just basically sitting right here, looking up at the screen. And there were people just waiting for that thing, like Nessie said, to open her eyes and wake up. So yeah, we'll use the fluorescent paints, and we'll use uh, we'll use our interference paints all the homemade stuff because it would be really really nice to have all that opaque yeah that would be really sweet and all that opaque uh, fluorescent paint there and also too that we learned that the was that the green stuff world oil or the sorry the pigments that we turned into oil paint those are also surprisingly enough those are also pretty darn opaque yeah, she was she was looking at you, but not looking at you. There was that level of very creepy, wasn't it? I think we'll just shoot a couple of lighter colors here onto these guys. Let me just look and see. Yeah, we we did get some lighter colors on those. Let's do that now here. I think we're all caught up. So, Tiago, I hope that you're doing well. I hope that your Monday didn't have too much Monday in it because, well, sometimes that's how Mondays go. And, of course, we've got... Yeah, oh, that's what that... You know what? Believe it or not, that one, that was the first time I tested the fluorescent uh, paints from Marion Street. So it would be only appropriate to try the new fluorescent oil paints on that as we try and maybe get a couple of lighter boards here on the deck. See what we can do about this little DS here that this is on. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Kavinsky, definitely not a wet palette. Definitely not a wet palette. All it is is just a piece of parchment paper like so on top of a piece of cardboard like so. Seriously, just a piece of cardboard. And I take a glue stick. That's a, the little residue that you can see there. So that when we're done with it, all we have to do is just peel this right off the cardboard and we're done. And that's it. So yeah, you know, uh, no liquid on the palette because, well... That's what we're always obsessed with, right? Is less of the liquid, not more. Why we're practically using dry brushes a lot of the time. Ah, so lots of meetings for Tiago on Monday. I just want to get caught up here. I think we're all pretty much caught up there. Yeah, that's what the heck? I'm going to throw some of this lighter... Go down here. Maybe on the other one, we might have done more of a our yellowish gold type color there. I think we'll just stick with something a little bit more neutral here. And yeah, I used to use those when I was first doing the oils. The that typical palette paper, right? That it's kind of waxy on one side and very slick and everything. And then I realized, no, I, I don't want to, I want to actually have it soak up a little bit of the extra moisture. 
And that's when we switch to just taking the parchment paper, throwing it onto the cardboard, and that's it. There's another reason, too, that this thing right here is, is uh, proportionally sized to fit on camera. So it just makes that whole process a little bit easier. Now we're not going to get the uh, rust effects here with the rings on the spar like we did on our orc ships, if you remember those. So you can see there's a, a lot of rust on those, but we're not going to do that on our Empire of Dust ships. Get some of these rungs on the other side here if we can. Like this. And maybe these ones down here, especially now that we have our darker tone all along that spar. I guess we can still sneak some some lighter colors on here. However, I'm thinking adding a little bit of thinner, and yes, that sticks. Why? Because all the paint that's already there is a whole bunch thicker. Now it's a whole lot thinner. More of that over here. Yeah, I can see that can be how much lighter that can get over there. A little bit over here too. Blending brush. That end. Blending brush like so. And I think maybe I can. Tr uh, no, I'm gonna try and get that other more of my light colors onto this sail. Brilliant yellow. Hill maybe with the white make that a bunch lighter here. This is their usual Filbert style brush. Get nothing fancy about it. Let's see if we can sneak this in there and I don't want necessarily need it to be that much lighter either because it's in very close proximity to that other sail there wouldn't be as much light on there anyways so I'm gonna grab some lighter nah I need that to be more Prussian blue at least over here back to this Lighter blue again. Take some of the extra off of that. Now we need to darken down in a couple of areas. Ah, we'll just use this. Terra Rosa. Some of our Indian yellow. Maybe a bit of asphaltum here. Speaking of some dry brushing. Just going to dry brush some darker tone in here sometimes that uh, just like when I'm doing the lighter stuff over the dark like we did here I have to come back and get some fresh darker color because it's been mixing with the lighter color every each and every one of those brush strokes all right so I have to come back here keep grabbing some of this darker color where's that asphaltum here we go and just let it all blend together do its own thing Right. You do well. I won't need to quite do so much over here. We that is nice and dark there. Uh, let's see. The first three print is done, and now the supports are removed. And then to the curing box. Well, Neri Field. I hope that it all worked out. I know you were just uh, just doing that first one, or the first test ones on Saturday. It would be really, really nice if I could maybe be doing at least maybe a test print or something. On, oh, oh, Valfair, thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much, Valfair. I appreciate that. That was um, That's a whole different sound. Thank you so much. 
Ah, that is fantastic. So, Valfira, we'll see what happens with the new brushes. Uh, again, I think they're called Princeton or whatever. They're synthetics. They were on... They're on Dick Blick. We'll see what those can do for us, right? But thank you so much for the donation, Valfira. That is appreciated as always. That, well, that definitely, well, that already did, that pays for the brushes. There we go. Thank you so much, because that was about how much we got in brushes. Because the rest was all those little illustration boards, because, you know, we want to keep doing these, right? Yes, we do. Well, not just those, but we also want to be able to do these guys. How much lighter is this? We got this pretty darn light here, so okay, I guess we'll do that. And uh, Oh, and Valfira, I do hope, speaking of hair and makeup, hopefully, now you're... The one you're working on is a slightly smaller scale. What is it, one-tenth scale? It's not one-to-one -one scale like the one I was working on earlier today. Now, of course, you know, I don't get to do the uh, wiping that off. It's a little bit different. Oh, you know, it's almost like I was using Brilliant Yellow Pale on it because that's pretty much what her head looks like now is that I pretty much covered it in Brilliant Yellow Pale. I wonder, has this glue finally dried enough that I can actually just get some paint in there? I'm just going to grab me one of my nasty old one true brushes here that we don't care about. I mean, look at, so a little glue gets on this thing. Who cares? A little bit of the asphaltum, a little bit of the Van Dyke brown. Only one way to know if it has, and that's just to start getting some paint on there. So I'm glad that you can chill out finally. All right, so that I'm going to say that glue is pretty much dry there then if we're able to get that paint and this is not all stuck together. All right, that was a, a little bit distracting over there. That's done. That's taken care of. Continuing to add a couple of more flavors of my dark here before we come back in. There was just some mold lines here that I thought I had gotten rid of, but apparently not. Let's come back in with some of our lighter colors here on the tops of these rings on our spars. Like this. Some there. Because I've I don't know anything about what's going on over there. Uh, there's been way too, uh, way too much stuff going on here. So I, I was, I just figured, okay, they're still happening. They must still be going on. Uh, I don't know if anybody is actually watching anything that's going on, but uh, well, certainly not in person, anyways. And have they basically just thrown everybody out of Tokyo who's not directly involved with the Olympics, I suppose? Get this here. Some over there. I'm, I'm guessing you probably hadn't had many chances to head over to the art store and get some Korean barbecue either. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hazard a guess. Where's that? There's Matera Rosa. A little bit of the asphaltum mixed into that. And let's run a little bit of this along the top edge of the spar. Doesn't have to be too much. That was that's all of these spars have pretty crazy uh mold lines running through them. Uh, so render dead, there's no base layer, of course, right? Uh, well, actually, not too long from now. We're going to be doing the pre-glaze here. But the pre-glaze can be just about anything. It could be almost dry brushed on. This was much more of a dry brush as, as far as it goes here. Sometimes the pre-glaze is much more liquid. And then, of course, you're wiping it away which is going to also make it more dry, basically. 
So unlike your, your acrylic stuff, there's no base layers or anything like that. Uh, and then gradual highlighting. It's, you kind of start out with that, those darker tones, some of which are going to be more staining than others. Then you wipe those away with your makeup sponges, right? And then you kind of come back in with your lighter colors like we typically are doing here with something like the filbert brushes. Hey, Clover, how you doing? So rendered it, just figure that that first layer, which is wiped away, well, that's pretty thin, right? So you could put thicker paint over that. Right now, we're putting actually thinner paint on here because mostly what's there is thicker paint. And this is thinner as in more liquid. All right, so sometimes thinner means it's got more liquid in it. Sometimes thinner means that it's just been practically dry brushed on there and half wiped away, which also means paint's kind of thin there because there's not much there. So Clover, we're matching another ship that we did in one of the earliest streams. Then we've got these couple of other ships here. We've got little tiny, well actually no, there's, they get smaller. There, they get actually even smaller than that. Look at that, that's a, uh, that is really tiny. So we did find uh, uh, one thing that the hot glue apparently doesn't really work too well on and that is uh, the casting resin slash plaster doesn't seem to work too well on that. I think maybe you can use a dot of it to sort of hold things, but ultimately you need super glue on there to really hold it. So yeah, render dead, it's, and it's always different depending on the miniature too. So sometimes the miniature that maybe if it's got a lot of object source lighting, it's very fiery. We actually start out with very light colors. And then it starts to get a little bit, uh, when you're doing something like those cave trolls that we did, your pre-glaze is much darker. Like on these sails, the pre-glaze was certainly very dark. Lots of browns and greenish browns, even a little bit of the indigo too. Let's see if I can lighten up this sail here now. So this is much thicker paint. And you can see how it sticks there because it is much thicker paint. What's over here is very thin because most of that was just dry brushed on barely dry brushed over some pre-glaze. We also want to have a little bit of texture here. That's why we're doing a little bit of a stippling slash scumbling brush stroke. We're doing the scumble. It's the hottest dance of 2021. Everybody's doing it. And you don't even have to get out of your chair to do it. It's the ultimate chill dance. Uh, so Clover, it uh, I've been trying to think of ways, you know, once we have all the fleet, even just for an entire fleet here, it's going to be very difficult in my photography area to show an entire fleet. So I was wondering, should I break out the Dread Fleet mat or cloth or whatever the heck it was and shoot these on that mat? Or do I actually try and do a piece of terrain of some kind, right? Some kind of photo thing. So I'm kind of tempted to try and maybe make a little bit of a piece of terrain of some kind to, you know, shoot these guys on. It could be fun. And I'll have to do the same on this sail too, but I, what I had to do was wait for that sail to be stuck on there because, well, we had to handle it pretty roughly, right, to get it stuck onto the boat. So I thought it would be really interesting, again, to have some sort of a backdrop for this, not just on a blue sheet or whatever, something a little bit more interesting than that. I don't even remember how large or small the Dreadfleet mat was. I know it did come with some of the little bits of terrain and such. Although I'm just imagining Mantic going, seriously? Seriously, you're going to photograph our ships on a Dreadfleet mat? Are you kidding me?
but it would be easy enough. Actually, we, well, we could. That is terrain that we could fit on camera here because, you know, it would be small enough. So that that's terrain that we could do. I think I might just film some episodes of that since, well, I, I wanted to do some terrain building episodes this month for the Patreon page. So we might just have to do one of those. Because we're doing another one of the here. I'm just gonna let me get my lighter coat right down the side of that sail. We're gonna be doing some more work with this stuff right here. I'm gonna try and make a larger building out of this. Now, maybe even something like this, because I have a whole bunch of these uh, these things cast, and it could be an interesting way to make a larger building. Not gonna use the roof pieces though. I'm gonna make my own, and I. Also kind of tempted to make this wall right here. So that's why we might just uh, make our own terrain piece that we can use to, to take the photos of, at least of the fleets. So just like we did on this one where you can see there's a little bit of texture on the sail, right? Now we're starting to add the, the sail texture here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm just uh, that that stupid kind of plastic terrain there. Yeah, not quite the same, right? I mean, we could kind of just have a couple of couple of islands, maybe some some buildings of some kind. So again, doing a little bit of see, we're doing that stippling here. Let it mix with the color that's already there. I mean, ultimately, well, we, well, I don't, we would have to do a painted backdrop too, which would be just more of a sky type of a thing. Uh, we won't be doing a giant board for it because since, uh, well, I don't even think you play this on that big of a board anyways, and uh, whatever terrain supplies we have, those are going towards, uh, those are going towards our Lord of the Rings stuff. That's why I had to put a, a stop to making more of my bolt action terrain because all that stuff is needed for our Lord of the Rings boards. But we could at least make something that's maybe two foot by two foot that has some kind of a backdrop to it. Something, yeah, maybe about two foot by two foot. That would be just enough to be able to at least photograph a fleet. And then maybe as time goes along, then we can make ourselves a much larger something that's interesting, uh, maybe even something that's modular that has coastlines and such. All right, Steela. Well, thanks for hanging out as long as you could. And again, if everybody could please give Steela Rebel a follow, that would be sensational. So, Steela, you have a good one. Again, I, I know you're just counting down those days. Just six more, six more days to go before. Well, not complete freedom, but. I'm sure you'll definitely be happier once uh, August 8th comes along. So yeah, we'll start with uh, kind of a smaller photography type thing first. And then well, also too, once they get us some more ships, because we don't, we sort of have just the, what, the starter Basilean and Orcs. This is the only true total fleet that we have. Again, doing our stippling here. You can see how it mixes with the existing colors, right? It gets on that brush. Look at how dark the end of that brush is. It would be really fun to do a coastline type of a thing, uh, having some waves kind of going up onto the coastline. I mean, obviously, some kind of fortifications, possibly. Lighten this up, too. I think, 
I have to look and see how, look at the rules and see just how big. I'm sure there's different size boards that you can play on. Can't just be all one size. Uh, I would imagine there's probably an option for playing on a 6x4. I'm sure there's uh, some folks that have already played the game that know that right away <laughs> and could just uh, say so to say, no, it's it, it's all on a 6x4, or it could be potentially 4x4 four four or 3x3, three three, I guess. Not all game. Well, Lord of the Rings is typically played on 4x4. Four four. I prefer 6x4 myself. Now, part of that is because we're always using mostly cavalry armies, which lets you have way more fun with maneuvering instead of just, oh, look, they're they're all set up less than six inches apart from each other. I wonder what's going to happen on turn one. Huge surprise. All right, again, continuing to get some texture out of there. But then we also got to do the same over here on the, the little symbol thing which of course as always i wish that wasn't sculpted on there but what do we got here yeah we still have to add even a little oh that's what we use i think we used the brilliant yellow pale and the indigo together yeah And as we have to get the same kind of stippling stuff going on here, because if it's supposed to be part of the sail, uh, it should pretty much have the same textures. That's what I had going on here. I had basically two different textures. We don't want this to be a very strong texture, but just something. Can't do in this stippling effect here. It's mixing at the same time as we do the stippling effect. Now this, I'm just going to let the blending brush do that because I don't want too much light down here. See how it just gets kind of pulled off to the side. Either way, poof. That's it. That's all it takes. Maybe try and get this a little bit lighter down here. Where'd my... There it is. And what happens when you mix the Brilliant Yellow Pale with stuff like the Indigo? It, it's a little bit less bluish gray. It just kind of neutralizes that gray. A little bit, not not a bunch. And that's how we have the difference here with our, our Prussian blue and such. I'm going to see if I can't get some more indigo into the waves here to really deepen this. I'm also going to throw a little bit thinner into that too, I think. Yep, that just needed to be that much deeper slash darker. And then we need a little bit of that to cut in here on our waves. Okay, now you can see it. So see what we just did there. Kind of reinforces that wave. Very much like what we do with when we're doing the marble on floors. All right, same thing. So we're just kind of unevenly cutting into our waves there. Back to the indigo. Ah, yep, same thing down here. I could add lighter colors, but when in doubt, go darker. That's what it is. When in doubt, go darker. And you'll find that those lighter colors, instead of just highlighting the heck out of them, a little bit of darker color makes those, you don't have to add that lighter color. And it's generally easier to add that little bit of darker color in the shadows or even the mid-tones than it is to try and screw around getting a tiny little highlight in an area, which I was just thinking about that because that's something I got to do here. right along this whole edge here and then even these guys probably could be a little lighter Let's see what we can do here on the on the bow lighten this up too a 
There was a little bit of a double casting going on here in some places. Tried to file away what I could. Make that lighter here. And these last couple of... Ooh, also here too. I knew I was forgetting something. That's lighter. And then a couple of these guys. That's it there. Now let's see what we're doing on the these ballistas here. 